a Trident uh, mixing council and a plethora of old uh, tape delays and the Core Gecko Plex and RE201, RE501 and 555, um, an old uh, spring uh, which uh, King Tubby used for in the 60s. Which <laughs> some of my favorite records, uh, it's called the Space Expander, which uh, is a, he's a hero to mine yeah. in, in music and uh, I think in, in sound design. You know, really, if I need to chill and the kids are driving me nuts, I go in a, in a room and I put on some, some old uh, Jamaican roots music and <laughs> get lost and smile. <laughs> so, um, but how, how did that experience go working with so much gear live? It was, a, it was actually really awesome. I think uh, there were points where my partner Rod kind of kicked me in the leg and said, hey man, stop, <laughs> you know, slow down. Um, don't get too uh, too hasty with the feedback, but uh, you know. <laughs> uh, with that many delays, <laughs> yeah, definitely delays um, uh, in, in many ways. Uh, <laughs> so since then, you've stripped your your uh, live room down. Well, uh, ultimately, we'd love to come out with with uh, a lot of hardware, but uh, we actually just moved house um, kind of suddenly. Um, so it's been a, a lot of chaos trying to move three kids and us. Uh, find homes for 11 cats. Um, <laughs> How many? Uh, 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 too many. <laughs> uh, but uh, lovable, you know. Um, and, but but ultimately, uh, yeah, it's been it's been kind of a, a tough uh, few months, but uh, we're we're getting through. And I guess uh, it, it, more to point, um, would have had a lot more, you know, hardware if, so, if given the possibility, because that's ultimately how I work in the studio yeah. primarily. But uh, when it comes to just doing things on the fly, if I'm on the road or traveling or on an airplane for to Tokyo for 19 hours, yeah, this is a, a go-to. Yeah. So what's what's the basic setup? So uh, right now I have uh, well um, the the Roger Lin, who's a, a hero of mine, um, and he made this amazing effects pedal, the, the Adrenaline. I have the one two. This is the edition three, but uh, it can create. It's mainly for guitarists, but uh, you know you can create. You can really dial into it. With the software, so I've created a lot of my own patches. I customized at home and you know, saving the, the user base, but it creates uh, you know different uh, sequences because it has a, 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 a you know tempo-based sequencer inside of it where you can modulate the sound with you know filter up and down panning, etc., and really alter the the space of the sound and sound design, and then obviously the the uh, digital version. But the, the algorithms are really great for a pedal. That's, uh, that's the space that This is the RE, yeah. RE2, yeah. Yeah, the RE20, which uh, I actually, when it came out, I had a friend that worked at Guitar Center and he told me about it mm -hmm. prior to getting released. And, you know, he told me if I got four, he could get me your know, manufacturing costs and all <laughs> of them. And he's like, I think you're really going to love this on the road. And I bought, uh, well, but coincidentally, it fell around Rod's birthday, so I sent him one in the mail. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, we're we're playing the Bergheim next month, so this is uh, this is coming with us because I'm not bringing these, you know, 40, me, 40 pound echo boxes with me. It makes me happy to know that you're gifting your partner in dub techno uh, a space echo. Yeah, well, <laughs> Rod honestly has gifted me with a lot in uh, over the years, just in terms of influence and friendship, and mm -hmm. uh, it's a big part of the reason I'm here tonight or here in, at uh, Mutech. Yeah, but unfortunately, Rod couldn't be here, so. Rod Medell, if you don't know, one of the... Are we good? Okay, so, uh, yeah, Rod Medell, uh, Deep Chord, these guys collaborate as Echo Space and as CB313. Uh, uh, and I mean, Rod's been one of the cornerstones of the dub techno. Well, Rod and I have been friends since the 90s. And yeah. I, I started sending Rod demos way back, you know, even before the, the label had started with, uh, was friends with Mike, um, who was a partner at Decord at the time. And they were the ones that really gave me like great feedback. Just said, man, if we had all of the money in the world, we'd put out every piece of music you've written. But um, they passed on a lot of this stuff to uh, this other guy, Mike Sickinger, who ran this label Octal in uh, Boston at the time. Um, and he loved it, but he was asking me to incorporate Acid House into what I was doing. And I just, I'm like, 
man, I live in Chicago, I grew up on Warehouse and Tracks Records, if I hear another Acid House song, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> but oddly enough, uh, while she was uh, doing her rehearsal, I started tweaking around with uh, bringing up this plug-in version of a 303 in this program called Orion, which is archaic, but uh, something I beta tested years ago, and it just stuck. It made the most sense to me in my head mentally, how a studio should be arranged, you know, I've never done anything too extravagant, but I like the idea of just an old school desk, effects, you know, keep it very, you know, black arc, yeah. you know, kind of Jamaican kind of style of mixing. And that's how I perform. I generally like to uh, treat the, uh, the, the mixing board and the effects as the primary instrument in a performance. To me, it's like those are what, you know, it's like that, that one, you know, amazing dub track where you're like, fuck, how'd they do that? Or, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cuss, but, um, <laughs> like, how'd they do that? You know, this, like, the sound just springs out of nowhere, and then, you, you know, you start, it, like, almost hits your chest, you know? That's what's great about, the, I think, a lot of the Jamaican vibration moments, like, lead with the bass, you know? But uh, then there's, there's so much you can do and discover, and that's what's great about uh, using this kind of approach to, I think, uh, performing live and also in the studio is you never end up with the same results twice. Agreed. Yeah. It's hard to repeat yourself in those circumstances, right? I mean, it's like... It's hard to repeat yourself with so much echo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's an oxymoron, isn't it? But it, you're absolutely right. Um, <laughs> But you know, ultimately, uh, so this program is it's 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 old, and uh, you know, it's not uh, the best thing out there on the market right now. And I don't think they've updated it in like six or seven years. But uh, I've been using it forever, and if you know, I, it works. I, right. If it's not broke, <laughs> why try to fix it? Right. We don't all need to use Ableton. Hey. Right. Well, that's the problem. Was I did use Ableton, and I love it, but uh, for me, it's like that you know, threshold and, and cusp of uniqueness, you know, and it's so hard to find that nowadays because everything's so accessible. Yeah. When I was a kid and growing up loving electronic music and, you know, 12, 12 years old, my, my, my grandparents got me a synthesizer, the DX7, and it was just, it was all uphill from there, or downhill, awesome. financially, you know. All of my other friends had cars, I had two cents. <laughs> <laughs> right, on that note, let's get it started. Okay, hopefully this is uh, something good.
TV3.